Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another day of Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. Today is day nine, and our sketch is from Nikki Rowland for Bella Boulevard. And um, I knew kind of what I was going to work with on this one um, with regard to those circles. And then I pulled out a stencil, this uh, one from Cartabella, and it is called Holiday Ornament Stencil. Um, it is from their uh, Very Merry Christmas collection, and it's just ornaments. And I'm just putting some Deco Art me Media modeling paste through it. So it's modeling paste from Deco Art, and which is just white. Um, and I kind of want it to act a little bit like a resist. I don't mind if it takes some of the color, but I don't want it to take a lot of the color or all of the color, I should say. And I'm kind of just putting it where I think those circles are going to be. And then I'm going to have a little area down in the bottom right hand corner, a little lower than what the sketch shows for the title. And then I shook up my Distress Oxide ink in tumbled glass and in festive berries. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that on here. Um, hoping that it that modeling paste resists the ink so and it did a pretty good job I'm pretty happy with how it came out because I really just wanted the ornaments to be very subtle I didn't want them to be um, kind of in your face or anything so I really like the way that this turned out and then I'm adding the festive berries and I thought these worked well together because uh, the if the blue and the red mix which actually looks like kind of baby blue and pink it just makes like a purpley color so um, those colors really work well together if they happen to mix up and so I can use them wet and it doesn't matter so much um, You see my hands moving there. I actually did this at a retreat and uh, Some people were interested in learning a little more about mixed media media huh, mixed media so I was kind of telling them what my goal was and what I was using and um, How I wanted it to look as I was doing this. So that's why you kind of saw my hands doing some funny things there Um and as you can see, as they mix together, it doesn't really make a muddy color or a, an earth tone color, color. It just makes it kind of a purpley color, um, which is kind of hard to see. It's more periwinkle than purple, given that it's a light blue and a light, um, a light red or pink. <laughs> it's really red. It says festive berries on the bottle. Um, but yeah, it does come out kind of pinkish with all the water that I'm adding. And so I am just going straight from the bottle to the paper. And uh, the paper doesn't have any gesso on it or anything like that. Um, I'm just kind of making sure I mix uh, mix the bottles up beforehand because all of that oxidization um, stuff falls to the bottom. So you want to make sure that you mix that up really well. I don't mind that there's a white spot in the middle. I know that's where my photo's going, so I'm not really too concerned about that. And then I am sprinkling some Dilutions Shimmer Spray in periwinkle blue and in I think that's post box red um, yeah I'm pretty sure that's post box red and uh, I, I don't think the red one is not shimmery just the blue one and so I'm happy with the way that that's looking and then I decided that my cut files I did not want them white after all um, which is very handy to cut things in white because you can alter them to be whatever color you like given um, whatever inks you have available whether they are uh, mist in a bottle like I am doing now or whether they are inks in an ink pad or um, gelatos or watercolor or whatever it happens to be they are very easy to alter um, and so I am just using my paintbrush going over them with more of that periwinkle blue color because I really want them to kind of stand out and pop off the page and this is actually going to be a Christmas layout I know it seems kind of weird given the colors that I'm using um, you would think it would be red and green, but no, I'm going with red and blue. And in the photograph uh, this year, I uh, bought my whole family matching socks um, that had dinosaurs on them. And Noah's pair are blue. Everybody else has red because they didn't have blue in our size and they didn't have red in his size. And I thought that was okay that his foot stood out because he's the only little guy in the photo. And so it's just our feet. Nothing... Um, uh, crazy or anything like that, but that is kind of like our family photo for the holiday this year. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with the way that it turned out, the photograph, and I'm happy with, the, with how the mixed media turned out as well. I do know that my title is going to go in that lower right-hand corner, uh, much lower than where the sketch has it, and so that's why that mixed media is down at the bottom. 
And as you saw there, I did ink up my edges of my paper with some blue ink. I didn't actually have an ink pad out for that. I just used the blue that was already on my blending brush. And then I had um, this extra piece of paper from another layout that you're gonna see later on, but uh, it had a big heart cut out of it and I only wanted the, um, two edges, which was perfect. And the polka dots on it are kind of like an ombre, um, reddish coral. It, it matches basically that red festive berries color. I don't want to say it's really true red, but um, it matches the red that's on my layout. So I thought that was perfect. And I went ahead and decided to go ahead and use that for my two edges. Uh, in the photograph or in the sketch, it looks like there is a border all the way around the layout. Uh, but since I only had the two edges to work with from that paper, that's what I went with. And I thought it works well because my title is going to be more to the right hand side. So it kind of balances it out a little bit. And so I took my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive and a little put a little bit of that on my cut file and glued it to my photograph. And now I am just kind of fussy cutting around there. Now I decided not to use my big scissors for this just because uh, I had those two extra lines from the cut file that I did not want to cut. And so I just thought those little scissors kind of got in there a little bit better. Um, I'm borrowing some uh, acetate from a friend that was at the crop. So shout out to Lynn. Thank you for that. Um, I am going to go ahead and glue my cut files down to that acetate using the same Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. And I'm going to make two shaker pockets to go on either side of my photograph that is in the center. And uh, that was acetate that was from Recollections. It came in like a six by six pad. I've never seen that before. Um, I usually just use transparency film, which I have a ton of, but apparently did not bring to this particular um, uh, retreat. So now I am adding some white paper behind each of these because I don't want to try and adhere them directly to the layout. That would have worked out. You could you could very well do that, but because there's mixed media on there, um, I didn't think it was a really good idea because things tend to not stick as well when there's mixed media involved. So I just went ahead and used my uh, pencil and drew an outline for the um, to back each one of those cut files with. So now I'm going to add my sequins to each of those uh, cut, uh, acetate pieces and I quickly realized that I need to put a little bit of baby powder in there to reduce the static electricity and so I uh, used the powder tool and kind of dumped a little bit in there you can't see it but it does help to allow the sequins to kind of shake around more and not stick to the acetate so that's what I was working on there now I did go from one, I poured them from one cut file to the other because one, the one that I'm working on actually has the foam adhesive already on it. The other one does not. And what you didn't get to see was I took those two white round pieces to my splatter box and I just sprinkled a little bit of that periwinkle blue dilutions and some of the uh, red dilutions onto the background of those two white circles so that when the sequins are shaking around in there, you can still see a little bit of the the mixed media effect, basically. So I'm pretty happy with the way that these turned out as well. And I'm just using this really thin foam tape that uh, my friend Janie got me. So shout out to Janie too. Thank you for that. Um, it is really narrow. Like an, I don't even think it's an eighth of an inch thick. I don't know. It's very narrow. I have not um, bothered to measure it, but... Um, it's pretty sticky and so far it's working well. I don't use it super often because it's the the backing is hard to get off because it is so narrow. Um, so I don't use it as frequently as, uh, you know, I might use it if it was, um, if the backing came off easier. But in all honesty, I really don't use it a lot because I kind of save it for these really thin um, cut files that I want to make shake, shaker pox pockets out of. I don't want to waste it on something that's really big. And I'm telling you that, but while I'm telling you that, I am using it to back the same cut file 
in the center. And that was mostly because I wanted it the same uh, thickness. So I want I don't want the middle cut file to be um, taller in dimension or higher in dimension than the two outer ones. So I just used the same foam tape. And also I left my foam tape at or my regular foam sheets at home. And so um, I'm just using kind of what I have. So several reasons there. Now I have these stickers from Pink Fresh Studio that say good cheer. I thought that was the perfect blue. So I went ahead and used that for my title. Um, I don't really have anything uh, earth shattering to tell in this story, except for that this kind of worked as our family photo this year. I mean, I have a lot of photos from the holidays and groupings of people together, but um, we don't normally do matching pajamas for our family or anything like that, just because, uh, well, for one, it's it's super expensive. Like that could get really pricey really quick. And especially if a lot of us don't really wear them any other time of the year. So I thought, you know what, let's let's just go with socks and they have dinosaurs on them. And um, if you follow me, you know, Noah just loves dinosaurs. So that was like the perfect thing. Now I am bringing my sequins to the outside of my shaker pockets and putting a little grouping here on the upper left hand corner and of the right hand circle and the lower right hand corner of the left hand circle. Um, and I'm just using my crystal katana tool to pick those up and put those down in some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. <clears throat> I'm also putting some around the title to bring that down to the title area. And I'm liking the way that it's looking. I did end up with just two, I think just two leftovers, uh, of those, um, snowflakes. So I decided to pull those out and add them over by the title because I didn't see the point in just saving two of them. Um, that wouldn't be very useful on a layout to have two. I would probably want three or more. So uh, I thought, let's just use them up and get them out of my stash. And I'm pretty happy with the way that they turned out. So I am trying to hold that one down because it is next to that title. Uh, so it does want to pop up. And the title is already glued down, I believe. Um, typically with these foam alphas over mixed media, I do add liquid adhesive and I do believe I did add liquid adhesive. So I can't really peel the G in good up to have that snowflake go underneath it. So I ended up using a, a glue dot, which really holds well on mixed media. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of journaling to tell the basic story of what's going on in the photos. I'm almost done with the layout. I am going to add one more thing and you're going to see that coming up. But while I do this, I'll remind you, this is a hop that we are doing all month long. And so I am playing along every day this month. You can go and check out everyone else who's playing along today. The links are down below in my description box and you can give them a little bit of love. So um, I did add this uh, chipboard piece that I peeled a couple of the layers of chipboard off of. I think it says have yourself a very Merry Christmas or something like that. Um, I honestly cannot remember right at this moment, but I'm pretty sure that's something, it says something like that. Uh, just using some glue dots to hold that down and the glue dots stick really well to the acetate. So I know it's not going to fall off. And then I had that one single chipboard snowflake, and I'm going to add that as well. And that is going to get popped up a little bit because, uh, the dimension of the chipboard um, saying there requires that it has a little foam tape underneath it so that it can sit on top. And I'm liking the way that it looks and that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, definitely leave those down below. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, I thank you for taking time to watch my channel today. If you don't mind hitting that thumbs up, I'd really, really appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. And if you are subscribed, thank you for subscribing and sticking with me. And thank you for choosing my channel to watch today. I will be back again tomorrow with another video for you. And I will see you then. Bye-bye.